Hello and welcome to the BVB update for July 30th. I'm Stefan Butzko and in this format I cover Borussia Dortmund news and other shenanigans of the day. However, sadly, I have to start with news that are not so fun because uh, Borussia Dortmund made it official that Sebastian Allaire is battling a malignant tumor. And uh, yeah, it says here in the news, Sebastian Allaire will be unable to play for Borussia Dortmund for several months. The histological examination revealed a malignant testicular tumor. And uh, then it reads here, Allaire will therefore undergo chemotherapy. And Sebastian Kiel is quoted here saying, Sebastian will receive the best possible treatment. The chances of recovery are very good. We wish him and his family a lot of strength and optimism and our thoughts are with him during this difficult time. We ask media and fans for their understanding for the fact that we will not disclose any medical details concerning Sebastian Allaire's treatment beyond the above mentioned information, neither today nor in the months to come. So yeah, this is obviously sad to hear and uh, I too wish uh, Sebastian Allaire all the best and uh, hope that he makes a very speedy recovery. Um, obviously, uh, that then also means that Boris Dortmund will most likely try to sign another striker to replace him for, I don't know, um, however long he's out so um, yeah I'm obviously a little bit downtrodden by that news but uh, of course there was also something a little bit more positive yesterday which was the 3-0 win over uh, TSV 1860 München and uh, yeah I promised post game quotes yesterday <laughs> saying shortly after my takeaways however uh, <laughs> that did not materialize because there was a quick Ikea run so apologies for that but uh, yeah I'm bringing them to you now so um, here they go and Tessic was of course asked about uh, why he picked Zule and Schlotterbeck instead of Hummels let's say and uh, yeah his answer was quote we opted for a back four today because we're comfortable with that system and it also fit the opponent's style obviously you eventually have to pick two center backs and I said before that good teams not only have great players on the field, but also on the bench. And then he was talking about uh, why the halftime substitution happened where Hummels came on for Zule. And there he said, Niklas Zule felt his adductor slightly in the first half. So we now have the luxury to bring on Mats because we didn't want to risk anything with Niklas. Mats played extremely well. And someone else who also played extremely well was, of course, Daniel Malm yesterday. And uh, about him, Tessic said, quote, today... He really showed his pace. He was unstoppable in 1v1 situations with Karim Adeyemi. We have another super fast player on the other side, but it's not just about having fast players. It's about knowing how to utilize them. The opponents obviously adjust to the pace of our attackers. So it's on us to create the space for them through passing play and good positional play. Sometimes it's about being patient and trying to go for the through ball on the second or third pass rather than trying to force it right away. And uh, yeah, he closed with saying, not everything was perfect today, but it was a good first step in the right direction. And yesterday he was also asked about uh, whether Dortmund are missing Sebastian Allaire up front. And Tessic had a very nice response where he said, quote, We miss the human being Sebastian Allaire. Currently he can play with us, but that doesn't stop us from playing for him. And now a couple of quotes uh, from Mokoko and Wolf that I also scribbled down and here they are. Mokoko said yesterday, Quote, the key to victory today was that we played very fast. We only had one or two touches in our ball circulation rather than three or four. This win will really help our confidence as we prepare for Leverkusen. We're all looking forward to the start of the league campaign. We really have an awesome team, so I think a lot is possible this season. And Marius Wolf said, Donny's early goal set the tone and then we just controlled the game until the final whistle. 1860 Munich was the club where everything started for me, so I was happy to return. Today's win will give us a lot of confidence ahead of the match against Leverkusen. And uh, there was yet another game today, of course, uh, the friendly against Antalya Spor uh, with uh, head coach Nuri Shine, <laughs> as you can see here. And uh, more importantly, uh, Moray and Girena did make their comeback uh, in this friendly, uh, of course, uh, both only played only for one half. But nevertheless, uh, I think that's very positive and I guess sort of the reason why um, the the game happened. Um, the starting lineup also quite prominent. If you know, if you look at it, you know, had Maya goal, you had Moray, you had Papadopoulos, Koulibaly, and Aning as the back line, and Amrejan and uh, Brand started as well. And then you have had Wolf, Reina, and Bano Gittens in midfield, and Hazard up top. Obviously, you can see uh, the substitutions here too. So uh, it didn't end too well. And uh, yeah. Julian Brandt scored the one goal for Dortmund. Uh, of course, the game ended 1-1. But uh, yeah, more importantly is that uh, 
uh, Morey after being out for 15 months that he's back and uh, he said as much. Uh, he said, quote, it's a very special day for me. I really missed it. 15 months were a long time for me. I was a bit nervous this morning because I hadn't played in such a long time. No, I'm feeling really great. And uh, Iden Tessic also said after the, today's friendly against Antalya Spor, the game was very important for Matteo and Gio to get back on the field and get a feeling for the rhythm of a football match. And uh, yeah, we also had a couple of legends in attendance because uh, tomorrow on Sunday, there's the family day in Dortmund where, uh, you know, there will be an introduction, an official introduction in the Westfalenstein of the new players and whatnot. But also, I think there will be a game of uh, Dortmund legends. And uh, some of them you see here in the picture, of course, uh, Lucas Barrios, but also uh, on the left here, you see Tony Da Silva, um, who, of course, is a legend alone for his free kick goal in extra time against Hoffenheim to tie the game back then. <laughs> which was a very heated match, but uh, yeah, also uh, Julio Cesar, uh, Paul Lambert and Paulo Sosa. And uh, yeah, these are obviously all veritable Dortmund legends, Champions League winners. And uh, yeah, I wonder if Lucas Barrios, I don't know if he's retired yet, uh, but uh, I, I just checked on Transfermarkt and see he right now is without a club. So maybe he could be the number nine <laughs> helping uh for uh, Sebastian Aller. I'm sure Lucas Barrios would still be able to score uh, one or two goals against Bayer Leverkusen, who apparently have a very leaky defense since uh, they conceded four goals against uh, Elversberg today and uh, were uh, thrown out of the first round of the German Cup. Uh, wouldn't be me knowing how that feels because, of course, Dortmund did manage to beat a third division team comprehensively, unlike Leverkusen, who are, of course, the next opponent. So um, I hope that uh, Leverkusen can replicate that defensive uh, masterclass they <laughs> showed today. And uh, yeah, I don't want to laugh at that too much though, because you know it's going to bite you in the butt. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's end it here. Uh, I don't know if I'll be back tomorrow with another Dortmund update or on Monday. We shall see. But uh, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, let me know in the comments below. Goodbye.